Hello and welcome! My name is Akira and this is Hearts of Iron 4! Finally! It's out! After a year of waiting it's out! And we're gonna play. And we're gonna learn. Because obviously the game has come, and come out today. I am not an expert. I am no way an expert. I've been watching a lot of videos online both during development and this last few days when a few YouTubers have been lucky enough to have preview copies but I'm by no no way an expert so let's let's just try anyway I, you can see I've been playing the tutorial a little bit and um, also a little bit of streaming uh, of the campaign I'm actually going to play now but it went pretty horribly because this is way too complicated a game that you can just jump in straight from installing it and and try to be an expert in, in, in any way, so I'm gonna try again. We're gonna play as Japan. Um, the Empire of Japan stands as a crossroads. Hikushi Ron, the Northern Expansion Doctrine, is favored by the army and calls for an advance into Siberia. Nansian Ron, the Southern Expansion Doctrine, is supported by the navy and has the rich European colonies in Southeast Asia and the Pacific at its target. And then of course there's always China. Japan possesses a vulnerable military, but its industries are starving for resources and time is running out. Which path to choose? Well, I'm gonna try to play it pretty historically. We're gonna tr start by uh, attacking China. Uh, but then I'm kinda gonna uh, play it a little bit by ears because it depends a little bit of what German does. If Germany only ends up in a war with with the United Kingdom of France, well, then maybe it's mostly beneficial to just attack their colonies. Whereas if America gets drawn in, well, of course we need to do deal with them. And if the Soviet gets drawn in, well, then we have to deal with them. So, well, just kind of have to see what happens. Anyway, we'll play Japan. We'll play on regular mode. We'll play Iron Maid, and we'll play with historical AI focuses. And I am just gonna overwrite this. This uh, let's play from earlier. Okay, so we start at 12th on the 1st of January 1936, and there are a bunch of stuff. Well, first of all, let's look. I really like this, like, we can see like the whole day-night cycle, we can see all of Europe here. Um, and of course, over here we can see that we have a bunch of troops already on the map. Uh, we also have a bunch of naval units, one of the larger uh, navies in the world. We also have some, some planes, uh, 329 carrier close air support, or like just core air support where some of them are carrier. We have 339 fighters, 102 naval bombers, 54 tactical bombers. Anyway, there's a bunch of things we need to, to look at and first of all, let's look at our research. Well, some of the things that I do know are good to take are this, Electronic and Mechanical Engineering, which will give a bonus to research time, so it kind of seems like a good thing. Uh, what you need to think about during the first part of the game is that you are, even though we are right on the edge of the war, there's still at least a couple wars to the like, big war, and probably still also a, a year or two until we do our war, start our part of the war. So right now we are building up. So we want to do all the research that helps us with that. So we want a con construction, so we are better at doing civilian construction, building more factories. We also want m better machine tools, so we have more production in our factories. And then we're done with kind of the initial ones. Then I would think either go for better support weapons or go for land doctrine. I think I'm going to go for the support weapons just so we start producing them and get some um, some uh, what's it called we can see it if we go into production it is called efficiency of course it is anyway we have a bunch of free civilian factories so let's build some stuff um, the game recommends that you do civilian factories so I think I'm just gonna do that um, civilian factories obviously let you build more factories and they can be converted to military factories once you go to war. Um, and you know, it's probably just a good idea to have a bunch of them to build stuff. And you also use them if you want to trade. So 
probably an all round good idea. Then we have some military factories that haven't been applied. So I definitely want a bunch of infantry equipment. I think we probably also already need a lot of that. So we also want some support equipment. Um, so how are we for motorized? We actually have plenty of motorized right now. Oh, not plenty. We have extra, so we don't need to add a lot to that. Um, I think I'll add a little bit more to this. Then I will actually add some artillery because I want to add that to our army at some point so I'm just gonna keep keep one factory on it and I'm gonna keep it at lowest priority so to get resources last uh, just so we have some production and, and are building up some efficiency um, what about do we want to do some light tanks I think we do because I do think that we have at least some of them in use. Do we want to research some tanks first though? It might make sense to wait until we actually research some new tanks actually, so we're gonna wait with that. Cancel that. And we do actually have 22 productions on going anyway, so now we just have to put out our naval factories and might as well just get these ships up here done. Okay, then we have to set a national focus and there's a bunch of different things we can do. We can reinforce the Soviet border, would give um, Japanese, we get a, we get an well, the only thing it just seems to do is to increase world tension, so I guess it's just in order to get to this. Okay. Uh, we can also go for the Chinese border incident, is, which is what leads to the um, to the war with China, uh, which I think is probably a good idea to do early on. Then there's army primacy, which gives extra army experience, gives some building slots and some military factories. We can also go for naval primacy, we can go for increased naval production. And spiritual mobilization, which gives uh, extra manpower and unlocks a bunch of stuff here. The, uh, what's the extra research slot, that's probably good to go for early on. Industrial efforts is really good. Hmm. I think I will go for the Chinese border incident though, so we can to get to war with, with China, and then we're gonna switch over and do this for the extra research slot and the infrastructure, at least for the industrial effort, um, and then probably switch to army focus, but let's just start with Chinese border incident. We wanna go to war, we wanna, wanna try that out. We also have, we don't have any p to be, uh, to, blah, 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 divisions in training, so um, this is, oh, uh, I wanted to check it out first. This is our standard infantry. You can see we have quite a big infantry division. A lot of countries, like I just played with um, Italy, for example, in the tutorial, and they ha their standard army formation only has six infantry, whereas this has 12, I, think, I guess it's companies, 12 companies in a division. So we are more powerful than, than the average. We also have engineers and recon in in our. We don't ha currently have any army experience, with, but if we did, we could add the support artillery, which I plan to do. We could also add artillery directly here, uh, which I don't want to do. And we could, of course, add just more troops. But I, I think this is fine for now. Anyway, we want to train a couple of those. I think training four at a time is probably five at a time. Yeah, let's try five at a time. And we want them to be trained here where they have a harbor. Okay, and then finally we have insufficient resources. There's a bunch of stuff we need, amongst other oil. We want to do it at somewhere we have a lot of influence. Um, So let's say, okay, 
uh, for three factories. So when you trade, you trade away the production of your civilian factories in exchange for oil. And it kind of makes sense. It's it's kind of, if you translate it into real world terms, it's kind of, okay, we want some of your oil, but in exchange, we sell you some of our goods. Makes sense. So some of our civilian factories goes to producing the stuff we need in order to buy that oil. Uh, in the old game, in Hard Find Tree, you produce stuff and sold it and used the money to buy stuff. So this is just making it a little bit simpler. So anyways, we trade away three factories um, to Venezuela to get the oil we need. Then we need some aluminium. And I think we're just gonna buy that from the United States. They're not in the war yet. We also need some rubber. We're gonna buy that from... I think we're gonna buy it from Siam. We also need some steel. We might as well buy that from the United States as well. So, um, we have what we need, I think. Did we get all we need? I guess that it has to unpause before it, it actually gets traded. Now, okay, then we also have a bunch of troops. So let's just add them to some theaters. And first of all, I'm just going to take all of these troops on the islands and Japan. Because we're not gonna worry about them right away. Uh, to, to start with, they'll just be a defensive army, so we'll add them. We'll call this the. We'll call it the. Uh, Japanese defense. And we're gonna add a field marshal to this. Uh, offensive doctrine, offensive doctrine, offensive doctrine. Well, just any of these guys, I guess. Um, and you can see most of this are the Chutunchi Shidan. Um, but if we go into this one, the Chutunchi Shidan, which are a light company, they are reserves. We also have the these one with with light tanks. The Toshititu Kansai Ryudan. I guess some of them were that. Uh, it's a bit hard. I think I'll actually change the symbol for that so we, we can see it a little bit easier. Uh, let's give them one of those. If we do this, seems like we actually don't have any of those over there. So now we take all the ones in mainland Asia here, and we also add that to a army, and we add that to a new theater. And we have a couple of those over here. Anyway, what I want to do is grab all of the reserves we have in this. them all. Gotta find them all. Add them to another army. This army will be defending this area. Mostly by uh, this uh, border with Soviet and so on and so forth. There will just be a uh, garrison. So we just need a guy. A, a guy, maybe someone, if we have someone with defense, probably not. Um, it doesn't need to be good. Sort by skill. So we'll just take a level 2 general. And what they need to do is garrison all of this. And this one though. Uh, they'll be the ones attacking, so we're gonna have to assign some borders here. We're gonna ass assign them this border. We're gonna assign them this border. And then we're gonna... Um, select all. So we're gonna do this. 
this and assign it there. And what they should do is spread them out among these two borders. Uh, post for an attack. So anyway, let's um, let's check this out. We'll go to tree, speed three and see what happens. See a bunch of movement. Oh, I also wanted actually to do this over here. Here we do a. Oh, we also want an uh, general for this, obviously. We want a good one. Uh, engineer trickster. I guess a level five general is good. But over here we wanted to do garrison as well. Just garrison it all. And it's a bit tricky on some of these islands to hit them. I guess I hit it all. Oh. Add some more garrison. We want to carry it on these islands as well. Okay, I think I got them all. Good. Let's see what happens. So now we are all moving them all into position, slowly but surely. And I think we the whole trade deal... So we actually have a surplus of oil now, all of a sudden. There's no reason for that. Um, so let's just... Cancel the agreement with... With America. Also have a huge chromium s surplus, but that's our own. Not importing anything there. So, uh, we have a small surplus still, but that's fine. We can't really do anything about that. So we still need a huge bunch of infantry and equipment. Uh, I think I'm gonna add another factory to that. So basically, uh, if you played Heart of Iron Tree, the production has changed quite a bit. It used to be that you would produce units and that producing those units would also produce the equipment they need and so on and so forth. Now you produce equipment and you produce them in lines. So this is one line and that line has an efficiency cap and an efficiency. And no matter how many factories I add to that line, they use the same efficiency. But I can add a maximum of 15 factories and once I've added them, I need to make a new line in order to produce more and that line needs to produce make its own efficiency. So you can see we added this artillery efficiency or artillery line and it is right now working up uh, production efficiency. It's at 17.7% now and it gains 1.7% per week. Uh, okay, so now we have moved all of these guys. They are now set up all along this border. Uh, only a bit here, a bunch here in this area and a bunch up here. Um, these guys are just garrisoning all of this. They just spread out and cover any important things. The same with, with these guys. Just spread out and cover anything important like ports and... Um, oh, 20, oh, it's fleet ports and air stations and stuff like that. Just to make sure that there's no weak points for anyone who wants in, to invade you. So that's a pretty nice function. Uh, the auto automatic movement and stuff in the old Heart of Iron was really ru rubbish, especially for defending. Um, so this is a big improvement. I've also been, as, as I said, I tried out the, the tutorial and it seemed like the, it did a pretty good job of... Um, this guy, where does he belong? Oh, he's from... from... Uh, Mount Coco. It seems like it did, the AI did a pretty good job of attacking as well, so I'm really looking forward to testing it out. But while we're just sitting around waiting, let's check out our navy. We have quite a lot of it. A uh, bunch in the home islands, bunch is the East Chinese Sea. Um, 
That's swap by area actually. Bismarck Sea, where's that? Oh, it's down here. Okay. Interesting. So if we go to this naval map up and press, uh, how do we get this? I guess we choose the ones in the Bismarck Sea. Oh yeah, and then we can choose which mission they do. So we could say patrol Bismarck Sea. We could say patrol Bismarck. We could say these guys in the East China Sea. Can we not come take more than one? Okay, and we want you to patrol um, this. Oh, I did wrong again. We want you to patrol here and here. And all of these guys. We want you to patrol here, here and here. Oh, I guess we have to do it like that. Okay. Uh, how do we move one? So we just do this. Why do you patrol this, this, and this? So let's um, let's probably go up to speed. Hey, anyway, anyway, <laughs> I was about to say get out to speed and get moving, but it is time that I end this episode. Uh, I know we didn't do much, but that's just the way Hard of Iron works because it's focused on one war. Uh, the game kind of starts up with a long period of just getting ready. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Uh, if you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Hope to see you in my next video where we'll be hopefully getting closer to a war with China and until then have a good day.